So good morning. Welcome to this morning study, the last study uh, in the, of the morning studies this week. And we're going to try to finish up Judges uh, 5, dealing with the song of Deborah and Barak. And before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have to study. And uh, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be here. We ask that you can teach us, guide us, and lead us. Um, we know, Lord, that there's many things that we need to understand, and we need strength and power in our lives. We need to be a witness of Christ's character to those around us. And so we just ask, Lord, that you can use us to your glory. Be with us in this study. Give us clear and understanding minds. Correct any errors we may have in our understanding. And we ask for a clear sight. Um, we pray, Lord, that uh, the things that we learn, that we can share them with others and that they will have an influence upon those around us. Uh, we pray for this movement and the people in it. We pray for the camp meeting and we pray for your angels to guide and protect. Uh, we pray that you can influence those that have to make decisions that affect those seeking visas, that you your angels can intervene if there's any time that the enemy is seeking to stop things. But we ask, Lord, that all things are according to thy will. We give our lives into your hands, and we ask that you can be with us now. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Now, we have uh, had done a lot of work in trying to sort through uh, these lines on Judges chapter 5, especially when we look at the last part of chapter 5, verses 14 to 31. So just a really quick summary, what we saw is that we have um, these tribes of Israel. And these tribes of Israel represent uh, the messages in this movement, the characters, the personalities, the influences. And we can see that not all in this movement are supportive of this message of Deborah and Barak. There are two, two names that are supportive, and that's Zebulun and Naphtali. And, and we looked at the symbols of them, what they mean, um, and uh, these, these relate to the ideas of chronology and the presenting of messages. And then we saw um, in Judges 5.15, it talks about the princes of Issachar, right, uh, which, which uh, were with Deborah and even Issachar and also Brack. He was sent on foot into the valley for the divisions of Reuben, that were great thoughts of heart, right? So it's going to talk about these different uh, tribes, right? All these different uh, conflicts, I guess, that are happening in the movement. And then 518 is, of course, uh, August 15th in reverse. That's the midnight cry symbol. And you have Zebulun and Naphtali were people that jeopardied their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. Now, we uh, then in verse 19, we came with this Tanakh and Megiddo, and we saw that this pointed us to December 25th, 2021, and so we could see that this is a rehearsal of the history leading up to December 25th, 2021, but it also shows that this history is being repeated presently in the movement, and um, so when we look at this battle with Sisera, with Parminder's message in November 9th, at the beginning of the 777 structure, uh, we can see that at the end of that structure, uh, we again have that experience repeated because Parminder's message needs to be defeated. Now, um, we have then JL, and we looked at... Um, her actions and we could see that the symbols that are here this defeating of this message is um 
uh, where what we did is we we could place way marks here and and the last bit that we dealt with was so we're going to look at these and then um, just go over these way marks and then we have the mother of Sisera uh, looking through the lattice right we can see that these are the lines and we can see the tarrying time is mentioned there um, and uh, we looked at, at verse 30 where I have problems with the translation in the King James. Um, but what we see is that what Sisera's message was trying to do was uh, first to divide the prey, uh, but also to take over the movement. And uh, the symbols here, we're going to address a little bit more in detail as we look at these lines. And, and then verse 31, so let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might, and the land had rest 40 years. So that brings us to the end there. So in placing these on the lines themselves, um, what we have is this, uh, these dates. <clears throat> so we'll go there. So we had uh, December 25th, right? Tanakh, obviously, those first three mentions in the book of Joshua. It gives us 252, 187, and 525. And the first one in Judges that gives us December, uh, or pardon me, the, the last one in Joshua gives us December 25th, 2021. And the first one in Judges gives us the symbol of midnight. Um, so... The period of darkness is verse 14 to 18. And then we have an increase of knowledge that happens on December 26, 2021. That is this study, understanding the lines that's been going on for uh, 304. This is the 344th study, I believe, or 349th study. Yeah, 349th study. <clears throat> so this, this continues through this, all of these lines. And um, and then the 391 words. Now, how did we get, how did we establish February 12th that the 391 words were relevant as that way mark? What was the symbol that we used to get there? Does anybody remember? Because first we had that way mark February 12th, but we didn't really have anything in the verses that pointed to that. So how did we get that established as the formalization of the message? Nobody remembers? So remember, this is this is Colin responding uh, well to my response to his post. So he posts on February 6th. I respond on February 7th. It appears that that email is sent to Jeff. Okay, so, so how do we establish that? Nobody remembers? How do we establish that the email was sent to Jeff? No, how do we establish that, that the 391 symbol is the formalization of the message that arrives based upon the text itself. What was the key in the text that gave us um, February 12th as the formalization? Because because we put it there as the formalization prior to having evidence in the text for February 12th. So 
I was looking for something that related to 391 or February 12th or some types of symbols that um, would place that there. So the way that I did it had to do with the diagram that Stephen did. Right. Okay. So it's 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 kind of a roundabout way, maybe. But doing it with what Stephen did kind of makes sense. Yes, I know. Right. So so what he did is he did a diagram. Uh, I guess I could bring it up again. I think that'd be a good idea because I think this was an important point and it might have uh, skipped our our memory uh, storage there Okay, so here we have this diagram. We have the 140, the, the 251, the 666, the 777, the Sunday Law of Constantine. Um, so how do we understand this? How does this relate to uh, February 12, 2022? Well, like he shows in the in the lower corner, the 140 and the 251, give us the 391. Okay. Right. So that means on December 25th, 2021, when Stephen connects Artaxerxes' decree to the Sunday Law of Constantine with the 777 years. Right. He's indirectly representing the 391. That is, we already had the destruction of Jerusalem in the 666 years, right? From the captivity of Jehoiachin to the destruction of Jerusalem. And so we have the 140 years to Artaxerxes' decree from Jehoiachin's captivity and the 666 years to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. So, so this now connects us, they, they connect this into a type of mirror. Now, the beginning and the end together are 391. So we have the symbol 391 that's connected with what Stephen presents on December 25th, 2021. Now, how does, how does this help us with the evidence from the book of Judges? So there's more to it. So we first have this 391. We know it's the 140th verse. And we're looking at this verse. Uh, what's the verse we're looking at? It's 526, right? All right, right. Okay. So the what you don't see here is from 457 to 70 AD is 526 years. No, just looking at that. Right. So we're looking at Judges 526 as this verse where it says, um, she put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer, she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. At his feet he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell dead, down dead. Right. So what we, did is we took these verses, specifically 526, and we could see that that gives us this other span. 
So we can connect what happens after 525, which is just which is at the end of the 525. We have this next event seven weeks later. That is February 12th, but it's the 391. And we can show that the 391, which is these outside spans, relates to the inside span of 526. So that's Judges 526. So that connects it to Judges. But it connects the 391 to Judges 526. So, so does that help people understand this point? It, it, it is a rather convoluted sort of proof. That is, it takes a bunch of things. So what we would do... So you're using the, the 457 day to the 70 and establishing the 526. Is that what you're doing? Um, say that again. You're using the 457 day to the 70 AD day. Yeah. Uh, to establish the uh, the uh, 526, right? Yes. Yeah. So he get his his structure with the 666 and the 777. So remember, December 25th is a symbol for the Sunday law. That symbol is 666. It's at the end of a 777 structure, right? Stephen 666 and 777 mirror gives us 391 and 526. Does that make sense? I'll put that in there. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's how we established that that can be drawn from the symbols in Judges 526. It connects to the 391 words. Right. Which is the email that I receive on that date. Now, it's also Odilio's study. Right. So... So Odilio's study um, is connected to this, but I think primarily what we're looking at with this line is the darkness, is the way that we're interacting with each other in this movement. And on December 25th, 2021, that conflict that I have with Colin uh, magnifies this and it brings a message and that we have an increase of knowledge in that period of time now, the increase of knowledge, we also would relate to the studies relating to the presidents of the United States, because those are going to begin in that period of time, too. So we have uh, two different types of studies that are beginning, the understanding the lines, and also the study on the presidents of the United States. <clears throat> And, and then we're going to have this November 24th as this empowerment. So, so we're just using the symbol. We're not, what we're doing here in this section of judges is we're not going like each verse means this way, Mark, and the next group of verses mean this way, Mark, et cetera. We're saying that this whole story is just a summary of, of the story of Deborah and Barak. And in this story, these different way marks are symbolized because even Tanakh, uh, gives us the 859, which connects us to July 18th. And now we mark November 24th uh, for a number of reasons, but um, dealing with our other lines. But here we can see it's going to be that 2,688 days, right? 168, so that's the week symbol times 16. Now, today is 25, 20 days to April 5th, 2030. Um, that because it's 15 times 168. So if you multiply 168 times 15, you get 25, 20. And 168 is a symbol of a week. So number of hours in a week. So we can see how that relates as a symbol. Okay, makes sense.
So November 24th connects us to April 5th, 2030. And, you know, we have to remember that these lines, these lines of Deborah and Barack, the line itself goes from uh, September 23rd to November 9th, 2019. So it's actually that history prior to November 9th. It's, it's dealing with the messages that are going to counter Sisera's message. Um, and then we can see the song of Deborah and Barack is a zoom into the end of Colin's prediction. Or, or, but, but I should say the symbol for Colin's prediction, because this is going to be uh, the end of the Levitical chiasm. So we can see that Colin's prediction that January 11th is there, but this is January 11th, 2020. So when we look at uh, the song of Deborah and Barack, the first part, it's going to all be about January 11th, right? So it's going to go from November 9th to January 11th, 2023. So it's going to be about that symbol, the 111. Okay, so that that should make sense to people. And then, uh, so this is, but this song of Deborah and Barack is a zoom into, into that January 11th, 2020, which is the formalization here in this structure, the end of the Levitical chiasm, right? Uh, but then when we look at the rest of the song of Deborah and Barack, we're saying that this is a what is a repeat of this history. So you have all of this history, and it's repeated here in this fourth angel arriving. So, so when we look at this now, we can see it repeats that history. And, and so all of the things that we are presently addressing are, are here in this line. That is, this line is representing this immediate history from December 25th up to April 5th, 2030. But remember, this is all on the line of the judges. It's simply the formalization of the first message. Right. So it's, it's pointing us to something that we're experiencing presently, but it's still covering mostly the past. What is now the past wasn't the past, you know, a year and a half ago. It was still the future, but now it's the past. <clears throat> so we can see how we can take the 859, and we know that the octal of 859 is 1533, and that happens to be the number of days to December 24th. Now, this period of time from December 25th to December 24th. I haven't placed it in here. I'm gonna draw another diagram of this. Well, maybe what I could just simply do is do this here, duplicate this slide. And then in this slide, I'll just get rid of this box because this is just taking up a lot of room. Um, and then what I would do is I would take one of these, and this is going to connect this span of time. So this span of time is 364 days. So we'll say it's 52 weeks, 364 days. And so what we have here, um, if we take 364, and we multiply it by seven and by four, we get what? Is that right? Did I do that right? No, I don't think I did that right. I did something wrong here. Um, well, I know what I did wrong. So I'm not, I'm just doing it the wrong way here. Um, so 
So anybody notice what what am I doing wrong here? What is, what do I need to do with this three sixty four? So it's fifty two weeks, right? That's what I thought you were striving right. for. Um, I was rolling so 50, out the math. So fifty two weeks. So, so fifty two weeks times three sixty is one eight seven two zero. So why would I do that? What am I what am I supposed to be doing? Because I always forget this one. So we have 52 weeks, it's 364 days. So I should do it this way. Uh, 364 days, which is um, 52 times seven. Now, if we take 52 times 360, we get 18720. But this is the, this is um, so what I need to do is I need to go 364. There's there's a number here that the number of minutes, that's what I'm skipping out. So anybody know the number of minutes in Three three hundred and sixty four days. It's five two five two four one sixty. Now we came up with this number um, before, and it had to do with a measurement. When we are dealing with weights, so. I don't even remember exactly what we were studying. It was something that we were studying. We we're going through the weights and it had to do with, uh, I think it was the golden wedge of Ophir or something like that, or something like that. It was some measurement of gold or silver. I can't remember what it was, but that's the number of minutes. Okay, so the significance of that number is that if we divide that, so if you divide it uh, by seven times 28, you get 18720. So what's the divide significance? It or, divide it or multiply it? You divide it. Because you're showing okay, because you're showing seven times twenty-eight. That's why I'm asking. It's actually seven times four. Pardon me. So if you divide it by seven times four, which is twenty-eight, it equals this. Yeah. So five two four four one six zero minutes. If what you was divide, that number again? you divide 28. it by 28. twenty-eight. But twenty-eight is seven times four, right? So I could put this in brackets, but I don't know if that. Right, it doesn't really matter. So it's the four seven times, right? Is what I'm trying to illustrate there. So if you take the number of minutes in 364 days and you divide it by the four seven times, that is seven times four is 28, then you get 18720. Okay, so that. Now, so why does this matter here, these 64 days? I mean, because it's something that I looked at when we looked at measurements and I recognized there is a 364 day calendar, that's 52 weeks. This calendar comes, anybody know where the calendar comes from? Egypt, isn't it? No, Egyptian calendars, 365 days. This comes from one of the apocryphal books. Okay. So. I'll take a stab and say Maccabees. It's not Maccabees. Okay. It's the Book of Jubilees. 
okay? So it has a 364-day calendar. Now, actually, one of the um, one of the calendars I use, if I can find it here, is uh, this calendar. Um, maybe it's the Book of Enoch. I can't remember, but anyway, it's one of those books. I think it actually might be the Book of Enoch. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you look here, this is a 360-day calendar converter. Um, and I use this calendar converter some of the uh, sometimes because it's got everything nice and compact. Before we had our calendar converter, it uses 365 and a quarter. It uses Julian and Gregorian as well. It doesn't have the biblical. It just has the rabbinic. But they actually have a 364-day in, in Noah, in Noahkin calendar. So this is from uh, the book of Enoch. So, so they talk about, yeah, the book of Enoch, the book of Jew Jubilees, and other biblical literature of that period, and to a lesser extent, the Bible, all utilize the 364 days. So it's 14 times 13 times 7. And so anyway, this is all about this, this calendar. Now, I think it, it's a symbolic calendar. It's not meant to be an actual um, calendar. Um, but it, I, I came across this uh, article because I was looking at, see the 2,569 days, the seven years, right? This is something that we deal with the, the 490 years. So I found that they did some of the same calculations I had done. Anyway, that's kind of a, a roundabout um, uh, point. But when we look at this period of time then, 364 days, what is, is then the significance? Why? I mean, we can say it's this number, but what is it representing? From December 25th, 2021 to December 24th, 2022. This is the first angel's message. We have the first invitation in connection with December 25th, 2021 for this movement to work together. Um, what, what comes to my mind is it is uh, 364 days. So you have yeah. a symbol there, the 25th day of the fourth month, plus 144,000 minutes. You could divide it in that way. Is there any legitimacy? Okay, I didn't catch everything you said. It was a little bit um, broken up, and also your accent. So, so All right, okay. So, yeah, so it's, it's 264 days plus 144,000 minutes. Yeah. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that, that just comes to mind anyway. I don't know if that's significant. Right. So so we have this 100. Yeah. So we have the symbol, the 364 days. We have the 52 weeks. That's uh, what's the 52? Um, it's May 2nd. Right. So so we relate it to to May 2nd. That's the center of a chiasm, the week of Christ study. Now, so we can look at this number different ways. Obviously, that means 52 times 7 is 364, right? And then we can look at the number of minutes in a day, 364 days. And that's going to give us that large number there, 524160 minutes. And then we have the four seven times. And so if we we take the four seven times, that's 28. And and we multiply we divide that by 28, we get this July 18, 2020 symbol. So so we see those symbols there, but it's reaching to December 24th, 2022, which we're marking as the arrival of the second angel. So what I'm asking is what is this telling us about the arrival of the second angel? What is it telling us about December 24th, 2022? 
What does it mean? It would almost seem like you're giving a support that these figures are, are telling us the validity of July 18th. Okay, so we have the validity of July 18th, but it's marking December 24th, 2022, because we have the end of our 777 structure, right? No and disagreement. We had, and we had an invitation in connection with that that was rejected. 364 days later, we give another invitation. This time to a new series of studies saying that what we had studied the past year is important for this movement to look at. And, and we're going to present it simply. And nobody that we know of joined us in that from Canadian or American group. Um, didn't seem to be any interest in it. Right. And, and it happens, of course, after this first message was given, this is what was what was dealt with on December 25th, 2021, was this conflict, which wasn't really a conflict. It was really an invitation. Let's study what Colin has presented. Right. It's misrepresented and misunderstood. Right. Which is is the darkness that we have. And so when we get to December 24th, I mean, it, it's not that period of time given for them to consider things, not having me bother them or whatever, you know, however I try to, to look at it. I, I just thought I'll leave them alone for a while, not bother their studies. I listened to some of them, but I didn't, uh, you know, enter in, in any sort of discussion about anything. So when we get to December 24th, I make this invitation and, and a lot of that has to do with the heart searching that I went through in connection with what Colin had, had what had happened with Colin's failed prediction, right? And so I felt that what we were being led to do was to humble ourselves and um, and initiate uh, this interaction again, right? That was what we went through. That's what I went through anyway. And so on December twenty fourth. I give them this inf in invitation. So we have these symbols pointing to this, 364, 52, uh, the number of minutes in a day giving us this number that gives us this 18,720. We have this four, seven times, all of these things here. So what is, what is December 24th, 2022? Then we placed it as the second angel arrives. So we're saying it's the close of probation for the first message. Right. That's what happens with the second angel arriving. OK, so. The. If we're looking back at history. Mm -hmm. We would recognize that. This. Initial message given during the Millerite time. as far as the first angel would have been relevant, especially where 391 was concerned, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in an odd way, had you taken your calculation of the 520, 24,160 minutes and multiplied that into seconds had you considered that yeah I did and what did you come up with um, I don't remember at the time because I did this a long time ago uh, so 5, 2, 4, 1, 6, yeah. Well, we got 31,449,600 seconds. Now, if I'm looking at that, 
we have 1449 as part of that product. Yeah. 1449 plus 391 takes us to 1840. And you would also have 360, so you, you're 31 or three plus the six zero of the 600 mm -hmm. would give you the symbols of the day for a year prophecy, the prophetic year, but would also give you 1449, which was what the Millerites had used when they were doing their calculation, bringing them to August 11th, 1840. Okay. Okay. Um, so in this in this situation, your calculation here, I would say, is even more valid because then this is establishing the second angel's message as beginning for December twenty fourth of twenty twenty two. Okay. Yeah, so so we we know that this all uh, relates to a message that has been given to this movement to consider, right? That is, um, they asked for water, but she gave them milk, so to speak, right? She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. Um, yeah, so the three hundred and sixty years begins in fourteen forty nine. Right, so that's what uh, um, the three hundred ninety-one years begins in fourteen forty-nine. Yes, but there's still three sixty, and then thirty, and then one. Yeah, that's that's all Iran is saying. Yeah, I I don't disagree on that. Okay. Now, now another thing is um, one of the things we have when it talks about lordly, we have, have this Hebrew number eleven seventeen. So, if you take, um, I'll do this calculation so you can see it. So, if I take this, uh, this is fifty two weeks, right? Um, you can see that there. So I took 52 weeks times seven. That's going to give us 364. And then we multiply this by, um, usually what I do is I go 24. That gives me the number of hours. And then I multiply that by 60. That gives me the number of minutes. And then I multiply this by 60. And this gives me the number of seconds, right? So there's that number of seconds. Right. OK. Now, if I divide this. By um, two, six, eight, eight. So that's that number that we have for the number of days uh, from November 4th or November 24th to the beginning of so the end of November 24 to the beginning of April 5th 2030 I get this number right so I get this 11 7 now of course I could divide this by a thousand just to get rid of the zeros so I get this 11 7 number and that's the word that's the Hebrew number for the word lordly so what we can see is that these numbers are all connected. These Hebrew numbers in these verses and these, uh, these structures, right? Now, it's also Jeff's birthday, November 7th. So that's another important point. <clears throat> okay, does that, that sort of help a little bit? to see how this is all tied together. So we can see that 1117 number in Lordly, Jeff's birthday. 
Um, so this is the message that Jeff had been giving. And, and there's probably lots more symbols in these numbers that we don't notice. But if we take this, this as we group it all together, all we have to do is see that the symbols of these lines, the way marks that we picked, are going to be represented in these verses. That's uh, the point here. And then when it comes to what happens on December 24th, those that are not benefited by the first message cannot be benefited by the second. So what is this second message that is being presented here? Now, I'm not saying these dates are correct. We, we put these dates here just because, right? We had put some dates ahead. So we don't even know. I, I said that it's formalized when the line simply presented begins. But, you know, it could be formalized when the line simply presented ends. I don't know. You know, it could have some other date. So what is the formalization? So that's what we have to address right now is we have December 24th as this invitation. Do we have something that we can mark as the formalization? Now, one of the things that uh, we have in these lines, just to kind of help here a bit, is um, we had, uh, it's in this line, Remember we had these this year span, a 363 or 383 day year, a deficient embolismic year. And we had had this symbol, um, 777 months, which is 23,310 days, and 777 lunar months, that's 22,945 days. The difference is, 365 days. So this was a key. These different spans of year, a 365-day year, a 383-day year. We had a 354-day year dealing with the story of, of, of Ezra 7 to 10, from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, 354 days. And then we have this 364-day year, which is this Enoachan Jubilee year, 52 weeks exactly. So, so we have this idea of a year. So here we have a 364-day year. I mean, we could say, well, this is a 365-day year to the next December 25th. But what could we use to say this is the formalization, or would we have some other date as the formalization of this message, the second message that arrives? So, so the second message that arrives is an invitation to the movement. Now, we could have stuff dealing with the camp meetings, or maybe we don't even know what these dates are yet. You see what I'm saying? So how do we address this? Because we want to establish, these ones are well established. These four way marks, but now we have these three way marks here, and we want to we want to establish them in this line. So part of it is what is the second message that that you can't receive if you haven't received the first message. Right? Because those that reject the first message cannot be benefited by the second. And so the first message seems to me quite clear what it is it has to do with how we interact with each other um, how we how we evaluate what other people are saying how we represent them how we're going to you know deal with the disagreements that occur in the movement so we get to december 24th we we give another invitation 
And so obviously those that didn't receive the first message aren't going to be benefited by the second. So what is the second message? Where would we mark it? <clears throat> Can anybody tell us what the second message is that arrives December 24th, 2022? Do we have? Have any idea what it is? We put it there. We did, say it's didn't, solid. Didn't Stephen come up with something? On December 24th, 2022? Never mind. I guess that wasn't right. He did December 25th, 2021. Right. But based on, we, we just put a line there. We showed all these symbols that point to that way mark. Um, so we should be able to say what that way mark means. Okay, because one of the What's things the you see is record bear out. Well, look at Millerite history. It's the end of the 1533 days, right? Okay. Now, now symbolically, the 1533 is a close of probation, right? That is August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. But that's a secondary application. It's the 1,533 years from 508, right, to 1843. Or pardon me, it's the 1335. But the 1335 is the 1533, right? You understand what I'm saying? I'm kind of that's skipping a step. Determine. Right. So it's 1335 years. But its symbols are the same. So we can say that the 1335 substitutes for the third for the 1533, or the 1533 substitutes for the 1335. So so we can match those waymarks there. Now in this history, it's going to be October 13th. Right, that's what we're saying. It's October 13th. So we have October 13th, 1533 days to December 24th, 2022. Now, did we have 1533 any other place in our lines? Because remember, this is a repeat of history in our lines. So from Jeff's presentation, Raffi and Paniam in Alberta on January 14th, 2017, it's 1,533 days to March 27th, 2021. Right, so that's going to be um, 273 days before December 25th, 2021. So what does that mean? So we had 1533 days before in this movement, and we have it again. So a repeat? So, yeah, so we're repeating something from our history. Now, that 1533, um, if we, we remember that 1533 is 1260 plus 273, right? Uh, yes, right. right. And so that simply is if you go to March 27th, 2021, and 
we, we came to June 27th, 2020. So that from, from Jeff presenting Raffia and Paneum, it was 1260 days to June 27th, 2020. And then another 273 days to March 27th, 2021. And the June 27th, 2020 was significant because it's going to be three weeks before July 18th, right? It's 21 days. The symbol comes from the 777 structure, the four seven times. Um, and it comes from the 21 days, comes from uh, Daniel chapter 10. Right, so it's dealing with uh, the three full weeks. So now we have 1533 ending on December 24th from October 13th. So it's December 24th, 2022. Okay, so. 1,872 days ago, inclusive. So if you count from today, um, so let me just do this here. Um, so I'm gonna go today minus, So it's March 27th, 2018. So March 27th, 2018 is, um, well, it's not the end of the 1533, because that'd be March 27th, 2021. I'm sorry, Theodore, I missed that. What did you ask? Well, just Iran has a comment there. Uh, 1,872 days ago, inclusive, was March 27th, 2018, the end so of the 15th. So what was the date in 2017? Um, so we go from January 14th, 2017. Okay. Right. So that's going to be, uh, let me see. So it's roughly... Yeah, 430 some days from okay i think i had a typo and i put 2014 instead of 2017 yeah okay but anyway you can see it it goes back to a march 27th so that's still significant even if it doesn't go back to that march 27th so, so we can connect these March 27th, okay? And um, Now, if you go from uh, March 27th, 2022, um, obviously that's going to be the same thing. 273 is going to bring you to inclusively uh, March or December 24th. So that's just natural. Um, then I want to see what we do. Here. So that's not helpful. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm just looking at some of these dates and their spans. So the question has to do with um, what is the second message that arrives on December 24, 2022? So we know there's this invitation to the Canadian group regarding the line simply presented. But what does that mean?
Does it mean anything? Nobody has any ideas? Okay, let's let's look at the verses. So we have to think about what that would mean, what that event means. <clears throat> So we said that um, 526 related to um, this formalization of the message. And, and then how did we relate to them, Sisera dying? He bowed, he fell, he lay down at her feet, he bowed, he fell where he bowed, there he fell down dead. Dwight, because you, you had commented on this yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Right, it was. Yeah. This was more of the one message. Accepting that the message to whom it's bowing was superior. Right. Now... So, to, I mean, we could look at this as, I mean, it's something to do with our lines. We obviously know it originally applies to Parminder. But here, it reminds us of the wicked at the end of the world, right? Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of God the Father, right? So the wicked are going to bow down at the feet of Christ and admit that they were wrong and accept the punishment that comes to them. So, so this verse, though, as far as understanding it on the lines, um, I would still tend to say that it, if, it, if it's applying to the first message, it has to be November 24th, 2022, because that's after the failure of Colin's prediction. Now, we don't see people bowing down, but we do see a message bowing down. In, in my view, right? That a message is defeated there. That's the empowerment, because we're saying it's the empowerment of this first mes message. And, and that empowerment allows us to come to December 24th, 2022, in a much more humble attitude than we would have otherwise. Not saying that we're really humble or anything, but I'm saying that we were humbled. Personally, I was when it comes to Colin's prediction and its failure. That is, we knew that it was going to fail and it failed. And, and normally you would think, well, that's going to cause us to to sort of exult. But what I saw, you know, quite clearly in that period is how God was leading. And. And I saw some of my own personal uh, errors in how I had dealt with the situation. So I basically repented. I apologized on December 24, 2022, not as some kind of uh, pretense, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, pretend way of, of, of saying something. I mean, I really felt all the things that I apologized about. Um, because I saw those things in myself. I saw one is that we need to recognize that we, we can let our imaginations uh, influence us when it comes to being separated from our brethren. We can have lots of evil surmising. We can misrepresent people. And, and the thing is, we're the only ones who can control that in ourselves. And we definitely can't control it in other people. Now, whether this invitation that's made there, whether however people perceived what I was doing, that's completely up to them. All I know is that when we made that invitation on December 24, 2022, it was real. And it represents a message then that comes to this movement, basically that we need to come 
to the upper room. Right, this is the message that's given to us. So if we look at these lines, so, so, well, we have to look at these verses again. Man, and the time goes by so quickly. Um, so I say, the mother of Sisera looked out at a window. So the mother of Sisera, we say, is the papacy, right? It's the papal spirit, not just the papacy as an organization, but everything the papacy really represents. Manipulation, the church using the power of the state instead of the power of the gospel. And it's going to cry through the lattice. That word cry, of course, is not talking about being sad. It is a message, right? Now, here in this case, it's going to be uh, a word that's not used very often. It's only once here, yabab. Um, to cry shrilly, right? So it's easy to imagine the mother of Sisera with a shrill cry. Okay. Could uh, the mother be the mother of the message? No, because this is the mother of Sisera, and we know that Sisera is uh, representing a papal message. Right. So this is the mother of Sisera. It has to be a, a papal attitude. It, it, if uh, maybe I didn't understand exactly what you mean, but I don't know what you mean by the mother of the message. Are you talking about our message? The message of Cicero. Is okay. Cicero a message? Yeah, Cicero is a message, but a mother represents a church. Yeah, but right. aren't we a church? Yeah, but we're not the mother of Cicero. Because Cicero is not of this message. He's, he's an anti-message to this message. So who's bringing it in? Well, Parminder brought the message of Cicero. Yeah. Right. So his message, because he's the general for, the, for Jabin, king of Canaan. But here we're going to be using a symbol instead of the king of Canaan. It's going to refer to his mother, right? This is poetic, right? Whether his mother actually did this or not is not really the point. The point is this is symbolic, right? This story here, this song. So, so in the song of Deborah and Barak, they're depicting the mother of Sisera looking out at a window and crying with this shrill voice. Um, uh, why and, and looking through the lattice, right? So this is this lattice, which is this structure, this prophetic structure. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? So we know that the tarrying refers to the second message. Tarrying occurs in the second message. That's the tarrying time, right? And so, so we would have to place this in the second message. And, and we could look at it as a parallel to the first disappointment, in a sense, as a counterfeit. Because in the first disappointment, you have this period of time end, and you're in the tarrying time, right? Well, here there's a tarrying time with that the mother of Sisera rec recognizes. And then her wise ladies answered her. And then it says, yea, she returned answer to herself. Right? So she's going to answer herself. And then it talks about, have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey? Um, to every man a damsel or uh, the womb of a damsel. And then it talks about to Cicero, a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides. Meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. Right. So we looked at this word spoil. We know that this relates to Isaiah chapter eight and Isaiah chapter eight has to do with the water coming up to the neck. That's the Sunday law. Right. The flood. 
but we related it, Jeff related this to the fall of the Soviet Union in 9-11, that it just came up to the neck and they had survived. Now he said they had was Moscow. We have to say that that can't be correct because Moscow is not an atheistic country. Right, Russia isn't. Moscow is religious now. That doesn't mean they're good religious necessarily, but they definitely aren't atheistic. And um, But we see that the head is actually spiritualism, which we understand is globalism, the UN. So that power moved from France to the Soviet Union, and now it's moved to the United States. The United States have made a league with the globalists, right? What do you that, make of the, the diverse colors three times? Right. So we have this, and, and it's and it's pre presented in a progression. So a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse col colors of needlework on both sides, meet for the next of them that take the spoil. So, so it, it just sort of repeats it, but each time it's adding something. Right. Doesn't mention the prey um, the the third time because a prey of diverse colors, prey of diverse colors of needlework. Then it doesn't say a prey of diverse, it just says of diverse colors of needlework on both sides. Meet for the next of them that take the spoil. So there's three, a repetition of three. Now, would this be a counterfeit three angels' messages? Or is there something else? What if it's another representation of a three-step testing process? Which I recognize the three angels' messages, but do we not have that occurring within the movement? Okay, explain again. You're asking why the three? Yeah, I'm asking why the three, why the progression. Now, is this representing three tests? Okay. Which, I, which I recognize we could apply with the three angels message. Yeah, but, but I'm saying, this, wouldn't this be a counterfeit? I understand that part, too. Yeah. Now, we have um, the scroll, which is... Um, basically kind of like a flying carpet um, idea um, where you have this scroll written on both sides. So Angela just refers to that. Now, now the idea here, if you, if you look at, um, on both sides, I mean, it doesn't put it in italics or anything, but it, um, you know, it doesn't show a Hebrew word for it, right? So, um, so that's plural. So the dip of colors, uh, so it just means it's a doubling. So that's why it's... Uh, here in this form and so when it says on both sides it doesn't really say on both sides in Hebrew but it, it's sort of implied um, so I'll try to, to show you what I mean here um, so the prey here shalal the prey and it uses this word racham uh, which is this womb right Compassion, and and then this rachma, uh, a maiden, based on the fact that she has a womb, right? Um, so it's it's kind of a doubling of the word, but here it just means really a compassionate woman. And and then it's going to say uh, 
to the head um, uh, of valiant, of the valiant, right? And then it says, again, shalah, the prey, uh, titzbaim, right? Tzedba, tzedbaim. Um, so that means dip, dips, or like dipped, but it's it's in the plural form, meaning to dip, but it's here plural. Um, and then it says uh, uh, lo sisra, uh, uh, lo sisra, so that means uh, to sisra. And um, then shalal again, right, the prey. And again, this uh, tzabayim, rachma'a, a rachma, a very variegation of color. Right, so this is the diverse colors, right, and of needlework, right. So this diverse colors. Um, so it, it's kind of it's it, it's kind of obscure, and that's the problem with poetry here. But uh, again, they just have this repeated, and uh, when they repeat it here, they're going to have a, a different form. It's a different plural form, right? So it's the same word, uh, rechma, but uh, rechmaim, right? So it's plural. That's why on both sides. And then we have the six six seven seven. That's uh, that that word that is uh, savar, that is for binding for the back of the neck. And then again, shalal. So um, just want to look at this word here. Where this shows up. So it is the word in Isaiah 8.8. 8. And I was wondering if it was. Um, so in Isaiah 8.8, 8, he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. So that's that six, six, seven, seven, right? And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel, right? So here we have that connection. Now it's Isaiah 8, 8, 8. So we have that, that 8, 8 number of Jeff's, right? Goes to Second Chronicles 29. Okay, so it ties all of these different things together. So how do we then look at this? verse now so this is a message we have to say this is the message of Sisera of what its intention is its intention is to take over the movement right this is what the mother of Sisera says agreed this is, this is like the papacy in symbolic language, not literally, but symbolically, saying, why hasn't Sisera, why hasn't this message of Sisera conquered As in, why hasn't this papal message been accepted by everyone? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the way that I would understand this. I would agree. Okay. A anybody else? The other point that we have to look at here. Yeah. From 528 to 531 is the eighth stanza. Okay. So we're dealing with the final portion of the message going forth to the world. Yeah. Now, as we keep referring to it as the Sunday law, it is still a message. It's a message. Hey. Of... Go ahead, William. I was going to say you brought up 538, 538 on the chart, and 
528. Oh, I thought he said 38. I apologize. Not a problem. Okay, so go on. But here, here again, this is a, this is a final message to this world. We are looking at this as to who is going to stand under the banner of Christ and who is going to stand under the other banner. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything in this that would have an interrelationship to the 28th day of the fifth month? outside of the number 528, beginning this stanza? Well, I don't have anything dealing with the 28th day of the fifth month. Okay. It's not mentioned in scripture. All right. <clears throat> but in, in this, the mother of Sisera, as we're, as we're placing this, as being the Roman church, the spirit of the Roman church, which is, okay. which is seen in Parminder, demonstrated right on August 29th, 2019, and, and still continues in the movement. Right. And so this message, this second message, that this invitation is meant to overcome that. But let's let's also be very blunt this is not just the message of parmender it's the message of parmender and tess yeah and the reason that i involve the both one being the representation of the civil power the other attempting to represent the religious power yeah and, and they make tess to be a prophetess right prophet tess which is an interesting play on words. Yeah. Right. So, and and I remember somewhere a little while back, she retired from traveling and speaking. Only Parminder is going to travel and speak. Okay. Not sure why that is, but that's what they had decided. Okay. So, um, so if we look at the lines then from what we've seen now, so I guess we're not 100% finished here. Our time is almost up. Um, so we're going to have to come back to this. But I don't think I'm happy with these way marks as the formalization or the empowerment of this second message. I think this is something else. Um, so some other dates, right? So if we're going to place a, an event um, I would probably just put the December 25th, 2022, along with the December 24th, 2022. Um, and then we have an increase of knowledge. And then we're going to have the work of the enemies and the laying of a foundation, right? After we have a formalization, whatever that formalization is, right? So there's going to be a formalization date that we would mark. And then we would have an empowerment date and that still may be future. Um, I'm pretty sure that the line ends on April 5th, 2030, but I could be wrong about that. It just seems to be that that's what that date needs to be in this line. Maybe it's the fourth angel arriving. Um, so maybe there's some other thing that is the third message that arrives, but to me, this is still, this is still future, right? There's things that are future. We made this invitation. It wasn't, wasn't that long ago, right? I mean, it's uh, four and a half months ago, <clears throat> right? So four and a half months ago, we made an invitation on December 24th. And, you know, now it's like May 11th. So that's about four and a half months. <clears throat> So whether that formalization has happened yet, maybe it hasn't. Maybe it's, you know, right now we're in the increase of knowledge. Maybe the formalization is the camp meeting or something like that. You know, maybe we don't even put the January 11th, 2023 date in here at all. Right. 
so so I don't know. That's part of the problem is if this is events that are future, we 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 don't know unless we have some specific symbol that that we could place as uh, the empowerment of the second angel as a date and it happens to fit with judges chapter five then then we can place it there but otherwise you know we're just guessing which is not a good thing so what we can say is the second angel's message has arrived and the second angel's message is a message that if you haven't received the first, you can't receive the second. So now this movement is being tested by another message. We don't know who's... Exactly. Yeah. And, and we're not particularly exactly certain what that is. It's connected with an invitation. Um. Now, I think to a large degree, it has to do with the message of the upper room. It's a message for a call to repentance, to true conversion. But but that's still a bit vague. I mean, that message is always there. Um, but it's a message to study this, this, these lines, right? An invitation to study these lines happens then. Um, but exactly what that message is... I mean, it's it's a message that's to defeat Sisera. And I would say has to do with this lament of the mother of Sisera. That is not that that is the message, but her her lament uh, symbolizes the th the symbols that are there represent the message that is the second message. If that makes sense. Because this is about a message that defeats Sisera. And, and so the goals of Sisera are, are what this message is addressing. It's addressing Sisera, right? It's what holds this what holds this movement back from accomplishing that goal? Well, obviously, all of this division that this movement has, the personality conflicts, the individual agendas and ideas, the inability to work together, uh, the judging and criticizing of others, the magnifications of what we consider the sins or errors of others, and the diminution of our own sins and errors. Not Fel moving forward. You know, what, what our problem is. Right, in ourselves personally so so that is the problem with this movement i mean it's been a problem for a long time mm. and and to think that we're somehow going to do the lord's work when we're unfit to do so um is so what what was the bizarre. so what's the bottom line what brings it together it's called unity right well, well, and unity doesn't happen because you legislate no. Unity happens from a combined effort of understanding and trying to process this understanding. Well, well, right? unity, unity is an individual work. That is, well, we understand that, but it's also a, a community work as well. Right, but it, it comes when the the individual is con converted. But the work oh. of the Holy Spirit unites. Do you think you're converted if you're if you're able? To be in unity with your brothers? No. If you're able to be in unity, then you're converted. So the problem is, so <laughs> you don't need an organizational structure to bring about unity. Thank you. But if you have people praying for each other, uh, encouraging one another, supporting one another, uh, recognizing the good in others, cooperating with others, um, instead of tearing them down, judging them and criticizing them, uh, spreading rumors and gossip, trying to weaken their influence because you're jealous or envious of, of what they're accomplishing. Uh, you think about your own ideas and you think, well, my ideas are better than everyone else's ideas. Why isn't anybody listening to me? When somebody listens to somebody else, you, you are envious of that. All of those types of things 
destroy unity, you don't need organization to have unity, right? Organization comes about through being organized, being united with Christ, and cooperating with the Christ, doing the, doing the work that Christ would do on this earth. And then we have unity of action, right? Because we're working towards the same goal, which is the glory of, of God. And so we're going to support one another. We're going to we're going to recognize because of prayer and and so forth where God wants us to put our energies, our time, our money, um, our study. All of those things he's going to show us what to do. And in doing so, we will accomplish something for God's kingdom and accomplish the work that he's given us to do. And so that's the message that's presently here in this movement. Um, but it's the message that... So the what happened, what, how does we recognize stuff? We notice it after? No, we notice it before, but we understand it after it's happened, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, okay. we measure okay. the time. Okay, we are able to more clearly understand it as it goes by. Right. So, I mean... We're looking to the future. We have a camp meeting coming up. We don't know really what's going to happen at that camp meeting. Just Correct. Planning the camp meeting doesn't mean anything more remarkable is going to happen. Correct. Uh, so, but you know, we act, right? We give people an opportunity to come together, to study, to pray, um, to fellowship. And can you say that we kind of respond to the spirit? Well, yeah, either we respond to the spirit, you know, by accepting the work that God's doing in our lives and in the lives of others, or we reject that work. So exactly. Yeah. So so that's where this movement is right now. So we're in that time in which we're recognizing that work needs to be done in our own lives and that in order for this movement to accomplish its task, we have to be converted and that our focus isn't upon, you know, organization, right, in the human sense and our, or attacking others, but trying to support what's happening. And, and I don't know how, you know, how that's going to happen. All I know is that each of us have to figure that out for themselves. Anyway, our time's up. Let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. And uh, I pray for each person. I know, Lord, that we all have things in ourselves that need to change in how we communicate um, in our response to uh, others that differ with us. Uh, we know that self exists and needs to be crucified. But we give our hearts to you, Lord. We ask that you can use us in spite of ourselves, that you can change us. And I pray that you, your angels can watch over each one today, that you can bless them in all that they do. Uh, bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.